Reverend Al Shapton and we back. Charles Ellison of TheRoot.com is our co-host. Charles, let's go to our friend Tommy in Chicago, WVON 1690. Tommy. Tommy. I don't hear Tommy. Let me... Hello? All right, let, let's go to... Uh, Let's go to Milton Taylor in Chicago. Let's stay in Chicago. Mm-hmm. Hello. Mm-hmm. I I do not hear Milton Taylor. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if it's a, our phone lines are. Can you hear me, Reverend? All right, let me go to Milton Taylor. Milton. All right, it's something with these lines. All right, let's get the lines straightened out. Okay, Reverend Joe Williams in Philadelphia, Reverend. Good afternoon, Reverend Shawman. I respect you. How are you? I'm good. How are you? We need to bring back some of that good old gospel music, the civil rights movement. You know, next tomorrow start black history, black music, but... Yeah, that's right. Tomorrow it begins. Yeah, well... I'm waiting to hear from the officer, hear from somebody. <laughs> All right, well, we got to, hold on a minute. I want to make sure yeah. they got your numbers, because okay. I want to do a gospel uh, during Black uh, Music Month uh, starting tomorrow, June 1st, uh, and I thank you for your call. You know, uh, uh, Charles, he is right, Black Music Month starts tomorrow. Now, right. you're, you're next generation of me. What, what music inspired you? You know, I, I grew up listening to... Uh, as a kid, especially a lot of jazz music uh, and also a, a lot of reggae music, a lot of roots reggae music, you know, so like a very early age, you know, I was listening to a lot of Bob Marley and Peter and Peter Tosh, but also listening to like the vocal greats like Ella and, um, you know, and Sarah and also listening to the to the play, you know, folks like Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie, you know, so oh, you, man, know I up in you, you want to be jazz. Jazz. You one of these old men, young guys, <laughs> right? That was that was just the norm, the standard in the household. You know, Philly's a big jazz town too, uh, so you know that's that's just that that comes with the uh, with, oh, yeah. the, with the environment in in the city of brotherly love. It's just uh, you know you can't you can't escape jazz, and that's still the case to this day. You know, one of the most memorable experiences I had, uh, and I probably should have written it in in one of my books is that James Brown, who you know I did a lot with, brought me to the Bahamas with him, and he recorded a uh, record with Bob Marley's band, Mm. trying to Mm. do a mixture of reggae and funk. And Mm. uh, the uh, Island Records uh, had had set it up. They never put it out, but I was there with him two days. Uh, I believe it was Compass Point, where they called it, where we recorded, where he recorded. I was just there hanging. And uh, but for that kind of stuff, I think about things now that, like, I've been around with Mr. Brown and Michael Jackson, and then of course the Grum Civil Rights with people like Y.T. and Reverend Jackson, and things that I would take as a young guy as ordinary. Uh, was really historic. I thank God every day I lived through that because uh, I, I was talking to some friends and I mentioned that and they said, wait a minute, you just can't cavalier say you were there with James Brown and the reggae band of Bob Marley. But it was Marley, Bob, Rita Marley came, the wife, wow. and uh, the son was just a, a little boy then who became a star on his own. Our wow. music and our history is so rich, man. It, uh, it, it, it is un believable rich it really is and, and you and when it comes to black music you really have to have a world view when you when you start to think about it like just like how you describe the collaboration uh, between Brown and Marley uh, I mean it's just so rich and in a very global way and I mean yeah. it, and it's had a very global impact not only have we had an impact on music I mean really original American music is black music no doubt about it <laughs> you know what I mean? no so doubt about it when you look at it from a from a world black diaspora Afrocentric worldview and you see how from reggae to jazz to Afro pop uh, to soca and calypso I mean just all these rich sounds that are out there I um, mean that's all black music Dorothy in Elizabeth City you're keeping it real with Charles Ellison and Al Shout. 
Hello, Reverend Al. How, how are you and your guests doing? We're doing well. How are you doing? Okay. All right. I had to change phones. I finally got through to you. Um, you know what, Reverend Al? I listen to your show every Sunday. I listen to your show on Sunday. Right after your show, though, uh, I turned it on the gospel music, Kurt Franklin, and uh -huh. jam to the gospel. I jam the gospel. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> it, it makes you feel good. I want to say uh, we need to pray, though, and we need to fight. We need to fight and we need to pray. Because number 45 went over there to a foreign country over there the other day. You can see how rude he was and how he snubbed the people. He actually literally moved one man out the way. Um, yeah. There's... Is this issue going on with with the man? But my question I have for for you, if you can answer this, why is this president, when the last one before him kicked the Russians out for spying, mm. what is so special, special, special about them? Why are they getting all this special treatment? I'm not well, understanding I think, I that. Think, I can't wrap my mind around it. Well, I think that the the answer is there's got to be some. And thank you for your call, Dot. There's got to be some uh, business mm -hmm. or some other unknown reason for this. Right. And, uh, I, and I think it will all come out in the wash. And, le and let me say this, that your call is, 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 I think, very critical. When you say that we've got to pray and fight, because, uh, you know, the Bible says faith without works is a dead thing. Many people are prepared to pray and engage.